The divine souls. We've been learning about the topic of Brahm. This is a very important topic to understand because. Obviously, I'm a little distracted. I said Brahm instead of Dharma. <laughs> Let me start again. <laughs> 
We were just singing about Napunsak Brahm. I think that got in my mind. So the topic of dharma is extremely important. Because dharma is the set of guidelines that we are supposed to live by. So if we don't understand what dharma is, then we don't understand how a human being is supposed to live in this world, and we don't understand what is the path to ultimate perfection and happiness. Although dharma is very complicated, it's a very difficult subject to understand, but if we divide the whole subject matter into two areas, then it's much easier to understand. <clears throat> so each day we've been talking about paradharm and aparadharm and how paradharm is bhakti paradharm is attaching your mind to god lovingly through the path of bhakti that's it nothing else qualifies as paradharm or the supreme dharm Everything else is in the category of aparadharm, which is <clears throat> how to be a good person. All the rules and guidelines for living in the world in all kinds of different situations, according to your age, your family situation, your progress in life. So the aparadharm actually takes up a much greater part of our Vedas and scriptures because it's so complex. It has to cover so many different areas of life and different types of possible situations. But actually, although the Paradharm is supreme, so it's more important than Aparadharm, yet you don't have to explain nearly as much about paradharm because it's more simple. Love Shri Krishna. Attach your mind to him. That's it. That's the whole paradharm. Although there are some ins and outs, some guidelines and some details about how to do that that one must understand, like how to do rupdhyan, etc. Not asking God for worldly things maintaining a continuous attachment of the mind to Shri Krishna all the time. There are some details like this, but in general the paradharm is much more simple. But it is supreme to the aparadharm. So I've been explaining to you <clears throat> that although this is the case, but we actually need both. Although aparadharm doesn't lead to the ultimate attainment of God realization, only paradharm does, only bhakti does. Yet, a wise person does follow many of the guidelines of aparadharm as far as maintaining physical health, how to behave nicely with other people, how to observe one's duty in the family. A wise person does observe these aspects of aparadharm even if they are following paradharm but they are not bound to follow all each and every aspect of aparadharm like all the worshiping formalities and vedic rituals that are required in aparadharm that is not required of the one who is following paradharm for them, the only thing that matters is attaching one's mind to God. Veda Vyasji himself has said, Smartavya satatam vishno vismartavyo na jatu chit sarve vidhini shedha suhireta yoreva kinkara he says, all of the do's and don'ts of aparadharm, all of that, wo sab jata hai. it all is included in just remembering Shri Krishna. He says, on the path of paradharm, there is one vidhi and one nished, one do and one don't. The do is 
do remember Shri Krishna all the time. And the don't is never forget him even for a second. <clears throat> so if one is attaching one's mind to Shri Krishna, then they have already observed all the do's and don'ts of the Vedas, all the do's and don'ts of Aparadharma. So you don't have to worry, did I observe this worshipping formality on this day? Did I worship properly? Did I do that? Is Krishna going to be angry at me? Will I get punished because I didn't do observe this formality? None of that applies to the one following Paradharm. But we still have to follow the guidelines of good health, good behavior, etc. So you understand how the two balance together. But paradharm is supreme. So if there's ever a conflict between the two where, well, if I do what I need to in order to attach my mind to Shri Krishna, well, this aspect of aparadharm I won't be able to observe. So if there's some conflict like that, then the paradharm should always be given priority. <clears throat> That's why it's supreme. So we understood through some historical examples about Sita Ji and Lakshman defying the principles of Aparadharm in order to follow Ram to the forest and the gopis defying the principles of Aparadharm in order to go and meet Shri Krishna on Sharad Purnima night to do Maharas and the wives of the Brahmins of Mathura who defied the principles of Aparadharm to take the food and go to Shri Krishna, even though that food was meant for the yagya. So we understood through all of these examples that paradharm is supreme. So if one is following paradharm, in other words, if one is doing bhakti with their mind, then they are free from those binding aspects of aparadharm. Now, at this point, someone may have, there are a few doubts that if someone knows Vedas and they know these aspects of dharm, they may question something like, what about heart purification? By following aparadharm, the mind is purified. Aparadharm karne se antahakaran ki shuddhi ho jati hai. Dheere dheere. हो जाती है तो जो अपरधर्म का पालन नहीं करता है केवल परधर्म का पालन करता है उसकी अंतःकरण शुद्ध कैसे हो जाएगा द वन हु डज नॉट फॉलो ऑल द एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ अपरधर्म हाउ विल दे प्यूरिफाई देयर माइंड so, Shri Krishna himself has addressed this topic in the Bhagavatam. He says, Dharma Satya Dayopeto Vidya Vatapasan Vita Mad Bhaktya Petam Atmanam Nasamyak Prapunati. He says, Nothing compares to Bhakti in terms of cleansing power to clean the mind bhakti is the most powerful agent in fact he goes to the point of saying even if someone follows the top style of aparadharm satya se yukta dharm the most truthful dharm, someone follows that and is a perfect person according to dharm for their whole life, even then their mind, nasamyak prapunati, their mind cannot be fully purified. Even if someone follows the path of gyan, which is coupled with great tapasya, even then the mind cannot be fully purified without bhakti, bhaktya. Shri Krishna says, mad bhaktya, my bhakti 
is the only way to purify the heart fully. Katham vinaro maharsham dravata va chetasa vina vinananda shrukalaya shuddhyed bhaktya vina shaya bhagavatam. Shri Krishna says, how can your mind be purified? How can your heart be purified unless it melts in remembrance of me? Unless you have love for me that melts your heart, your heart will not be purified. Unless you feel a thrill in your heart and your hairs stand on end when you remember me, your heart will not be purified. Unless you cry tears of love and longing for me, your heart will not be purified. It is only through this loving devotion that the heart can be purified. So Shri Krishna batate in Bhagavat mein ki antah karan shuddhi ho hi nahi sakti bhakti ke bina. To keval paradharma ke dwara hi antah karan ki poorn shuddhi hoti hai. Na dharma se hoti hai, na gyan se hoti hai, keval unse pyaar karne se hamara hriday shuddh ho jata hai. Aur Jagat Guru Shankaracharya bhi wohi kehte hai, shuddhayati hi nantaratma, krishna padam bhoj bhakti mrite, keval जो श्री कृष्ण के चरणार विंद से प्रेम करता है उसी का अंतःकरण शुद्ध हो सकता है जगत गुरु शंकराचार्य सेज द ओनली वे टू प्यूरिफाई वंस हार्ट इज बाय हैविंग लव फॉर द लोटस फीट ऑफ श्री कृष्ण सो दिस वन डाउट इज ब्रश असाइड वन डजंट नीड अ परधर्म टू प्यूरिफाई द हार्ट through paradharm alone, the heart can be fully purified. Okay, what about the elimination of sins? One big part of aparadharm is prayaschitta karm. Remember I told you there's four types of vaidik karm, nitya karm, actions you're supposed to observe every day, naimittik karm, occasional actions on special occasions in special situations and prayaschitta karm how you you repent you wipe away the effect of past sins and then kamya karm so this prayaschitta karm is very important because even without wanting to a person does sins every day when you think that our mind is the doer of our actions, so it means our thoughts are what are being judged by God, not just our physical actions. We may not have done any sin with our body today, but we definitely did some sins with our mind. Every time we had a negative thought, a bad thought about someone else, a bad thought about ourselves or even about God. This is all sin. So we are doing many sins every day and sometimes some really big sins. So how is a person supposed to counteract the effect of those sins? Because we don't want to be punished for them in our next life. If a person dies in this life without having repented, for the sins of this life without having done prayaschit for those sins then you get a bigger punishment in your next life prayaschit is a way of it's like if you're taken to court and you plead guilty and you get a lesser sentence because you pled guilty so by doing prayaschit we do our penance for those sins in this life and then we don't have to worry about it in the next life. So that's a big part of aparadharm. If we're not doing all those vaidik karm, so it includes 
some jap, some tapasya, some Vedic rituals like yagya, some charity. There are many aspects of this prayaschit karm which is all told in Vedas. You did this sin, okay, do this much jap, do this vrat, do this anushtan, is all prescribed. So if you don't know that, if you don't follow that, how are you going to do the penance for your sins in this life? You'll have to suffer the consequences in your next life or even go to Narak for those sins. So someone might think, okay, I'm not just going to do Paradharma, I also have to supplement it with this Prayaschit Karm of the Aparadharma. But Bhagavatam tells us that it is not so. <clears throat> it's not required. Ke chit ke valaya bhaktya vasudeva parayana agham dhunvanti karts nyena niharam ivabhaskara gives an example from the world of in the morning when there is a little bit of mist, the dew has fallen on everything, everything's a little bit wet and there's a little mist in the air, but then the sun rises in all of its glory and within minutes dries out everything, evaporates all the dew and all the mist and now it's a bright, clean, clear day. In the very same way, bhakti has the power to burn all of our sins in seconds. Vasudeva parayana, the one who truly has love for Sri Krishna, who's doing bhakti from their mind, that bhakti has the power to do... It's like the prayaschit we do is so weak compared to bhakti. One, for one sin, you have to do hours or days of prayaschit to cover that up, to repent for that and eliminate the effect of that sin. But bhakti, if you sincerely say God's name, even one time, if you sincerely do rup dhyan, even for one second, that has the power of hundreds or thousands of hours of prayaschit. So the one who does bhakti, truly does bhakti, has no need to adopt this prayaschit. You're already getting the effect of prayaschit. Whatever sins have been done in this life can be burnt up in a matter of seconds of doing bhakti. Bhakti is that powerful. And that prayaschit, you think about it, let's say you did you know, you knowingly did one sin today and you're thinking, okay, I have to go to Panditji and find out what is the prayaschit prescribed in Vedas for this sin. So Panditji tells you and then you go and you perform this prayaschit. But during that prayaschit, is your mind not active with other thoughts as well? So would you not be doing more sins? So you're doing the prayaschit for one and you're piling up more along the way. And then so how do you keep up with all the prayaschit that you have to do in one life? The problem is that prayaschit doesn't clean up the machine which is producing all the thoughts. Our man, our antahakaran, that is what is producing the thoughts in the first place. Wahi garbadha. तो वही पाप करता रहेगा और हम प्रायश्चित भी करते जाएंगे कभी अंत नहीं होगा तो भक्ति से पाप का नाश भी हो जाता है और अंतकरण की शुद्धि भी हो जाती है इसलिए अपरधर्म का पालन जरूरत ही नहीं है प्रायश्चित कर्म करने की जरूरत ही नहीं है Paradharm wale ke liye. So, now we've removed this doubt about the prayaschit. Just do bhakti. It happens automatically. That's why Shri Krishna says, Yat karma bhir yat 
तपसा ज्ञान वैराग्य तश्चयत योगेन दान धर्मेण श्रेयो भीतरपि भागवत जो भी लाभ दूसरे साधनाओं से मिलती है, मिलता है वो सब अपने आप भक्ति करने से मिलता है जस्ट डू भक्ति यू गेट द रिजल्ट्स दैट आर पॉसिबल फ्रॉम ऑल द अदर प्रैक्टिसेस वट इट मे बी कर्म धर्म योग ज्ञान तपस्या जस्ट डू भक्ति यू डोंट हैव टू सप्लीमेंट इट विद दीज थिंग्स भक्ति गिव्स देयर बेनिफिट मल्टीप्लाइड मेनी टाइम Okay, there's one last doubt that often people have. Irinani trinya pakritya mano mokshe niveshayet. Manu Smriti tells that every human being has some irina. Sab ke upar irina hai. Sometimes three irina are described. Sometimes up to five rin are described. Rin means debts. As human beings, we all have debts, and these debts must be paid in this life if one wishes to achieve liberation or God realization. So the question is: the path of paradharm that is for God realization, but one can't get God realized or freed from Maya until they pay those debts. so should we adopt certain because the debts are paid through the practices of aparadharm i'll give you some examples one debt is pitririn the debt to our ancestors by raising a family by having children and raising them according to the guidelines of vedas we pay the debt to our ancestors so that's aparadharm by observing that aspect of aparadharm we satisfy that debt called pitririn there is another rin called <coughs> bhutarin the debt we have to other living beings we satisfy that debt by giving charity this is also an aspect of aparadharm we also have a debt called niririn a debt to other human beings how is that debt satisfied by welcoming guests into your home according to how vedas tell atithi devo bhava the guest is also a form of god who has come into your house so you satisfy that debt by following those that aspect of aparadharm then we have rishirin the debt to the great rishis we satisfy that debt by studying vedas and finally we have devarin the debt we owe to the devtas the celestial gods like indra etc we satisfy that debt by performing vedic yagya also an aspect of aparadharm so if we're not satisfying all of these rin then how will we get the permission to get free from maya or get god realized ye pancho rin chuka ke hi koi maya se nivritt ho sakta hai ya bhagwan ko prapt kar sakta hai to kya kare hum परधर्म वाले हैं तो अपरधर्म का पालन करें क्या जब तक ये ऋण पूरे नहीं हो जाते नो भागवतम से अदरवाइज देवर्षि भूताप्त नृणाम पितृनाम न किंग करो नायमृणी चराजन सर्वात्मना यरण शरण्यम गुकुंदम परिहृत्य कर्तम वेदव्यास जी सज 
those five rina are automatically fulfilled by the one doing bhakti. Just like we said, sarve vidhini shedhaha syutareva yokinkaraha syureta yokinkaraha You've done aparadharm already if you are correctly doing bhakti. It's done, it's taken care of. You have surrendered sarvatmana yaha sharanam sharanyam. Shri Krishna is the atma of all the atmas. He is the atma of the devtas as well. He is your atma. He is the atma of every living being in this world, every human being. He is the atma of those rishis. He is the atma of everyone. So he is sarvatma and you have taken shelter in him. You have worshipped him. You have attached your mind to him. So all of your debts are automatically paid off. It's like if you owe this credit card company and you have this student loan and you owe the bank this, you have so many debts and then this one great benefactor comes into your life. You take shelter in that great benefactor Mami kam sharanam vraja. And he says, you, you just stay with me and I'll take care of all your debts. That's it. So that's Shri Krishna. Aapne Shri Krishna ka sharan liya hai, aapke sare rin ho gaye. Shri Krishna swayam chukate hai. Aapko fikr karne ki zarurat nahi hai. So this is the greatness of bhakti. This is the greatness of paradharm. We are not a slave to those debts. So we don't have to supplement paradharm with these aspects of aparadharm. We are free from all of that. So now that we've cleared all of that up, we can have a nice review of what dharm is just by having a quick glimpse into each of our scriptures. So what do our scriptures say about dharm? So what does Ved say? 80% of Ved is for aparadharm. All the do's and don'ts, all the vidhi nished. And yet Ved tells us, Ishta purtam manyamana varishtam nanya chreyo vedayante pramudha. Nākasya prishthe te sukrite nubhūtve mam lokam hinataram vāvishanti. Mundaka Upanishad, the one who adopts aparadharm thinking that they're going to get ultimate happiness is an absolute fool. Yes. Avidyaya mantare vartamana svayam dhīra panditam manyamana Dandram yamana paryanti mūdha Andhe naiva niyamana yatha andha Kathopanishad The one who thinks themselves to be learned because they know all about Vedas and Aparadharma and they follow this and they teach others they are a fool and the one who follows them is also a fool. They are themselves blind and they are leading the blind. Because this aparadharm, although it teaches how to be a good person and how to live properly in the world, does not give God realization or freedom from maya. It leads to rebirth and more of the same of what we have in this life and have had in uncountable lives since eternity. Parikshya lokan karma chitan brahmano nirveda mayan nastya krita kritain mundaka upanishad. By observing all the do's and don'ts of aparadharm, one cannot attain perfect happiness. One can only go to swarg and then they are bound to be reborn in this world. So, if one wants to attain perfect happiness, raso vai saha rasagvam hevayam labhvanandi bhavati. Taitri Upanishad says, 
God is perfect happiness, you have to attain Him if you want to become perfectly happy. So you must follow the path of Paradharm. Although 80% of Vedas is for Aparadharm, that's because the Aparadharm covers so many different situations. There's so many details <laughs> required to be explained. And the Paradharm is covered in only 6,000 mantras. 80,000 mantras for Aparadharm. 6,000 mantras for the Paradharm in our Upanishads. Because it's much more simple and direct. Gita also says, Yamimam Pushpitam. The one who gives flowery speeches about following this Aparadharm and going to Swarg and enjoying over there. Yamimam Pushpitam Vacham Pravadantya Vipaschita Vedavadarta. See, in Vedas, it's told, yes, you have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this, don't do that, don't do that, don't do that. But, Traigunya Vishaya Veda Nistraigunya Bhava Arjuna. Arjuna, all of that keeps you under Maya, keeps you in the three gunas of Maya. You have to transcend that, you have to go beyond that. Therefore, Sarvadharman Parityajya Mamekam Sharanam Vraj Aham Tvam Sarvapape Bhyo Mokshayishyami Ma Shuchah The one who thinks just by following the do's and don'ts of Vedas and observing all of those worshipping formalities and rituals that they're going to get ultimate happiness, they are fools, Shri Krishna says. Ultimately, you have to renounce all of that. Sarvadharman parityajya and just surrender to me. I will take care of everything. This is the paradharm. So this is Gita's final view on dharm. Let's move on to the Bhagavatam. <coughs> the second shloka of Bhagavat. Dharma projita kaita vot Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam Vidyam Vastava Matravastu Shivadam Tapatrayon Mulanam. This Bhagavat tells the Bhagavat Dharm. Bhagavat Dharm means the Paradharm. Not the Mayak Dharm, that's the Aparadharm. So, this Bhagavat Dharm that is told in the Bhagavat, it is Kaitava Rahit Dharma Projita Kaitavotra Paramo. It is without Kaitav. Kaitav means Dhokha, deception. The Bhagavat Dharm told in the Bhagavatam is free of deception. So what is the deception that it is free of? Four deceptions. Dharma, Arth, Kam, Moksha. This is how saints have explained this shlok. So Dharma is a deception. Arth, Kam and Moksha, these four are all deceptions. And the Bhagavat Dharm is bereft of these deceptions and beyond these deceptions. So why Dharm is told to be a deception and how Bhagavat actually beautifully defines and summarizes Dharm, I'll explain to you tomorrow. Bhagavatam is the crown jewel of all the Hindu scriptures. So although Vedas provides the foundation for understanding what dharma is, Bhagavatam is like putting the icing on the cake. It's the, the jewel in the top of the crown. So through Bhagavatam you can very easily and clearly understand what dharma is. Tomorrow I'll explain an instance from the Bhagavatam where some servants of Yamaraj, the god of death, had a bit of a discussion, almost an argument, with some of 
God's servants, Vishnu Dut and Yam Dut, had a discussion one day. Yam Dut wanted to take a person to Narak, and then Vishnu Dut said, No, no, he's coming with us. So they had a discussion of Dharma. And this beautifully encapsulates what the Bhagavatam tells about Dharma. So tomorrow I'll explain that as well as what the Ramayan tells us about Dharma. And one last thing. There is a higher dharm, higher than the paradharm. I'll explain what that is tomorrow. Bhuli Vrindavan Bihari Lal Ki.